Greetings everyone. Welcome back to Miss Recaps. Today I'm going to explain family drama film called Jerry and Marge Go Large, released in the year 2022. Spoilers ahead. Stay safe and enjoy. Jerry, who lives in the quaint community of Everett in the state of Michigan, gets up well before dawn every day to travel to his place of employment. He has done this for the past 42 years. He has a strong ability to perform mental math computations and recognize patterns. In addition to this, the Corn Flakes factory where he works has never had a better line manager than he does. The conclusion of his line, however, indicates that it is now time for him to finally retire. As his superiors have informed him, later on that day, Jerry's family gathers together to celebrate his retirement with a party. In attendance are his wife Marge, son Doug, granddaughter Liz, and daughter Dawn. Jerry's disposition does not improve after he retires, despite the fact that they give him a fishing gift as a retirement gift. This is because he is at a loss as to what he should do with himself. After a month, Jerry has not yet utilized the boat in any way. He went to see his accountant, Steve, today, and Steve informed him that his account had only grown by 2%, which is not very much. However, Jerry is not going to invest any more money in the stock market because he believes the risk is too great. Jerry isn't sure what to do when Steve tells him to take the boat to the lake. So he makes mistakes that end up damaging the boat's motor. He is upset with himself, so he goes to the store that he frequents the most where he overhears the sales associate discussing the roll-down mechanism that is used in the lottery. In the event that no player correctly guesses all six numbers and the jackpot reaches $2 million, those who correctly predicted three or four numbers will share the prize pool. This indicates that the chances of winning are significantly increased. Jerry keeps this trick in the back of his mind as he searches for a fly that provides an explanation of how the lottery works and then does some math to figure out how to get around it. If you only buy one ticket, your chances of winning aren't very good, but if you buy enough tickets during roll-down week, you have a chance of winning more than the price of the ticket, so all you have to do to make it worthwhile is buy enough tickets. Jerry goes to the bank to withdraw $2,000 in cash because he wants to put his plan into action. The following day, Jerry purchases all of the tickets, but he keeps this information a secret from Marge. After hearing the announcement of the winning numbers, Jerry does the math and is disappointed to determine that he was out just over $300. After a disappointing game night with friends, his disposition deteriorates, and when Marge checks on him, Jerry tells her that he has blown his opportunity in life. Marge disagrees and maintains that one can experience both good and bad luck in their lifetime. This one-word phrase demonstrates to Jerry that his estimation of the total number of samples was incorrect. The following time that Jerry visits the bank, he withdraws $8,000 and immediately puts it all back into spending on tickets. After some time has passed, the winners of the lottery are revealed, and one of them is Jerry. He takes home a little bit more than $15,000. When he's finished getting paid, he puts all of the money in an old can of popcorn that's kept in the pantry. After a few days have passed, Jerry and Marge throw a barbecue for their loved ones and some close friends. Jerry discovers that Liz is in possession of the can of popcorn, consequently, he needs to persuade her to lend it to him for a brief period of time so that he can transfer the money into a cereal box. When the party is over, Marge wants to talk to Jerry about the pantry, but he goes into a panic because he believes she has found the money. He claims that he's been winning at the lottery, but he didn't tell her because he was too embarrassed to put their retirement savings at risk. He claims that he's been playing the lottery and winning, but Marge doesn't care. They have a responsibility to smile, and this activity is just the thing to make that happen. Jerry and Marge make the decision to continue playing the lottery together, but when they go to the local store, they discover that the machine has been removed from the premises. The cashier recommends a location in Massachusetts, which is located quite a distance away. Jerry seeks Steve's counsel, and Steve responds by suggesting that driving to Massachusetts might be considered an investment in itself, in which case there would be no loss. Because he is interested in taking part in it as well, he contributes $1,000 of his own money. 
As they travel for so many hours together, the couple has a wonderful time together. When they arrive at the convenience store, they chat with Bill, who works there. He explains to them that obtaining tickets worth $16,000 would take the entire day, and that he cannot divert his attention away from the rest of the store for them. They finally reach an agreement, and Bill agrees to let them stay in the house on the condition that Marge take control of the machine herself. They wait until it is dark and then check into a motel, where they turn on the television and watch the lottery. After that, they devote the remainder of the day and night to sorting through the thousands of tickets. The following morning, when they wake up, Jerry has their winnings, which total $21,000. One of the research projects that Tyler, a student at Harvard University, is working on examines the probabilities of winning various types of lotteries. Tyler is able to find the same trick that Jerry did by looking at the systems. Despite the fact that his roommate Eric thinks it's stupid, to get back to the couple, Marge has an idea that will bring them back to the town they left. Jerry has had a lifelong goal of being able to assist others, and since increasing their wager increases their chances of winning, they will be able to expand the scope of their project. The following day, they make an appointment with Steve to establish a corporation. This will allow them to pay taxes and claim expenses in a manner that is compliant with the law. They plan to sell shares and involve the entire community in the endeavor. Because of this, they will have more money available for investment and will have a greater share in the profits. Because Steve believes that the concept has potential, he decides to make additional investments in the company, which they will eventually name GS Investment Strategies. After that, Jerry gathers the people in the town to explain the concept, and everyone decides that they want to participate. Doug isn't interested in participating, but Dawn jumps at the chance to purchase her own share. He dislikes mathematics, and he is tired of Jerry bringing it up in conversation. Jerry always considered counting coins to be a fun activity, and this continued even when he was a young child. As a result, they spent a lot of time doing it. For once, he wishes that he and his father could engage in a more typical activity together, such as throwing a ball. When Jerry and Marge travel to Massachusetts for their next vacation, they will place a bet for $40,000. Bill does not mind how much they use the machine, but they will never be finished before the store closes. And he cannot let customers in at that late of an hour. Jerry extends an invitation to join the company to Bill, and since the two of them are now partners, they are free to remain employed at the shop for as long as they like. By the time the night was over, Bill had successfully convinced two of his other friends to become shareholders in the company, and Marge makes the bed with some of her own nice sheets when they get back to the motel. They put the counting off until the next day so that they can spend the night together like they haven't in a long time. As a result of the topic's consistent level of interest among readers, Maya, a journalist in Boston, has been asked to compose an article on the lottery. The following morning, Bill comes to the room at the motel with the total amount of money that the store made from selling the winnings. They have made $82,000, which indicates that they have doubled the amount that they initially invested. Their company continues to expand from that point on, but Jerry and Marge don't find themselves growing weary of their 10-hour journeys because they enjoy spending time with one another so much. Back at Harvard, the results of the simulations that Tyler has been running are shown to Eric, and they demonstrate that the loophole is, in fact, real. Tyler does not have sufficient funds to get started, and he does not want to ask his father for assistance because he is determined to handle this situation on his own. Instead, he discusses his idea with each individual student residing in the dorms. If they all chip in a few dollars, they will have the capital they need to get their venture off the ground. But since Tyler is in charge, he does not want anyone else's assistance in filling out the lottery slips because it is a lot of work. The amphitheater in Michigan is in need of some repairs, and its owners are banding together to make those repairs and revive the jazz festival. Doug is taken aback when he goes to see Jerry and discovers that he is keeping all of the tickets in the event that the Internal Revenue Service asks for them during the audit. Doug is in for a big surprise because his father Jerry has put one of the shares in the business in Doug's name. Because Jerry doesn't want to count the coins without him, 
The citizens of the town get together in the evening at the local bookstore, which, like the hotel and the mailman's truck, was improved with money won from the lottery. Jerry brags to everyone about how well they are doing and mentions that a significant portion of the money will be used to place additional bets. After that, they all get in their cars and drive to a restaurant where they will celebrate. Jerry and Marge reveal to Steve that they intend to wager $600,000, but the only obstacle in their way is the fact that it would take too much time to obtain that number of tickets from the machine. Steve is of the opinion that they should keep making the same bets, but nobody wants to do that. They are trying to win the maximum amount of money possible before anyone at the lottery company figures out their strategy. Bill makes several attempts to acquire a second machine for his store. Despite the fact that the rules state that each store is only allowed to have one. As a result, they recruit a different shopkeeper to become a shareholder in the company and install a device in his eatery. Maya is in Boston and she is looking at the winner's list that is on display for everyone to see. She is surprised that Jerry has never been arrested despite the fact that he wins a significant amount of money every three weeks and travels 10 hours to play the lottery in another state. Since this appears to have the potential to be a significant story, her boss has given her permission to investigate it. When Tyler returns to Harvard, he informs each and every student that they have each made $50,000 during his absence. Everyone is happy for a short while, but they soon realize that in order to get there on time, they are going to have to fill out twice as many slips. Because Eric believes that the payout ought to have been larger, he breaks into the system of the state lottery in order to find out how many tickets were sold at each individual store. He comes to the conclusion that another group is engaging in the same activity. Later on that evening, Jerry plans to surprise Marge by asking her to take a break from working at Bill's store so that they can celebrate their 46th wedding anniversary. They celebrate their advancing years by drinking champagne and dancing to slow music on the radio, but when Tyler and Eric walk in, they laugh at them because they are so old. Because Eric does not want their groups to hinder each other's chances of winning, he asks Jerry to bring his group to Eric's and let him handle all of the betting. Jerry, however, declines the invitation, stating that he is not in the mood to merely kick back and relax. Instead, he enjoys cooperating with his wife on various projects around the house. Before he leaves, Tyler makes an attempt to insult him by stating that a farmer's math cannot compete with the math done by a Harvard student who uses binomial distribution. Jerry is already familiar with this system, and he explains the problems he sees with it. After that, he tells Tyler that he will only receive $32 for every $100,000 that he wins. Eric is unable to comprehend what he is listening to, so Tyler dragged him away in embarrassment. Maya makes her way to the headquarters of the lottery in the hopes of having a conversation with one of the company's higher-ups. However, the man is aware that the same person keeps winning, but he doesn't consider it to be a big deal because he believes that sometimes people are just lucky. As a result, Maya doesn't get anything juicy to write about. On another morning, Tyler approaches Jerry once more. Tyler utters a threat, but he is unaware that the clerk is in the same room and can hear him. He warns Jerry that if he continues to play the game, they will break into all of Jerry's personal accounts and use his identity against him. Jerry must stop playing the game. He informs the residents of the town that they are no longer permitted to play. During the meeting that takes place in the evening at the new library, he places the blame on a new variable, but he does not elaborate further on it. After learning the truth from the store clerk, Doug relays to his father that the situation at hand has nothing to do with mathematics but rather with what it means to be a person. Jerry was bullied for far too many years while working in the factory, but because he brought people in the town together, they now respect his abilities and appreciate his contributions. When the roll-down weekend finally arrives, Tyler makes sure everyone is prepared to place their bets. Jerry is still dedicated to doing what is right, but Marge has convinced him that now is the time to let loose and have some fun. As a result of this, he develops a desire to play once more, and as a result, the couple travels to Massachusetts to meet Bill and his machine. When Eric and Tyler arrive at Harvard, 
they discover that Jerry has called their bluff and is still active. In response, Tyler devises a strategy, which is that they need to make a roll down when no one expects it so that they can take everything. They can determine when the jackpot reaches $1 million by using their hacking skills. And then they can place bets equal to that amount in a single day. In order to obtain this money, Tyler strikes a deal with some wealthy friends of his father's. The students are successful in their attempt to bring the roll down to a lower level. Bill travels to the home of Jerry and Marge in order to inform them of the news. Soon after, Jerry has the epiphany that the crime was caused by the hacking done by the student group. Jerry's fury compels him to travel all the way to Harvard in order to confront them. Rather than engaging in a physical altercation with them, he delivers an impassioned speech. It's possible that Tyler is making a lot of money, but at the expense of the other students, who he is forcing to work for him. On the other hand, Jerry has spent the past few decades not feeling connected to anything but mathematics. He is finally getting the sense that he is a trusted member of the community, which is something that means much more to him than financial stability. Jerry heads back home, where he and the others discuss the next course of action. Bill and Steve have expressed interest in beginning their own roll down, but Jerry does not believe that this would be fair to the other players. Steve is unable to accept the fact that the lottery is not providing any assistance to the students. Because of this, Jerry has the realization that the lottery isn't doing anything because the people running it don't care. Marge and Jerry decide to talk to the higher-ups at the lottery's headquarters. He claims that the company was aware of the loophole, but that they chose not to address it because it was profitable for them to continue operating in this manner. Jerry has stated that he won't say anything if the lottery posts the current size of the jackpot on their website. He believes this will ensure that everyone has an equal opportunity to win. In addition, Marge requests a second machine for the shop owned by Bill. Jerry and Marge can now work side by side at Bill's as a result of the approval of their respective managers. When Tyler learns about the change on the website, he prepares to engage in combat with Jerry. However, at the subsequent meeting of the group, only Eric is present. Because doing this makes everyone else feel like an idiot, no one wants to do it anymore. So Tyler has decided to work by himself. Maya is obsessed with checking the publicly available list of winners. And she has discovered that Tyler also wins once every three weeks. After a few weeks have passed, Jerry decides to pull a fast one on Doug by surprising him with a football. This way, the two of them can finally play together, the way they should have when they were children. Maya rudely interrupts their intimate get-together in order to request an interview, which Jerry gladly complies with without hesitation. The tale of how Jerry's kindness benefited the entire community is moving, but her boss is looking for something with more clickability. The next time that Jerry and Marge go to Bill's, they learn that the lottery has revoked their license and taken their machines away. This transpired as a direct result of Maya's article, which, by positioning Tyler's hacking as the primary focus of the narrative, gave the appearance that it was fabricated. The article is also read by Tyler's father, who decides that as a form of retribution, he will withdraw his son from Harvard. The following day, Steve shows up at the couple's house to force them to attend their final shareholder meeting. However, rather than going to the library, they now attend the Jazz Fest, which they do not have to pay for. They discovered that they had not missed the final roll down after all. In their race against the clock, Doug, Bill, and the rest of the town's residents travel the length and breadth of the state. They each use a machine that is located in a different retail establishment. Jerry congratulates them on becoming such a large family, and then he stays to dance with his new wife. When the game is over, the group that was betting splits up into its individual parts. The majority of Jerry and Marge's winnings are invested in the launch of a construction loan business in the couple's hometown. They, like the majority of their neighbors, ensure that their children and grandchildren attend school. His former superiors at the factory are going to be shocked to learn that the group made a total of $27 million by the time everything is said and done. That was all from the video. I hope you like it. Please share your idea in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching.
Have a nice day.